Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to get the Void Avenger Scythe, which came out just a few days ago. It is one of the most difficult Null Gap weapons to actually get till this day, and it's a very nice one. Lots of people don't really like the Scythe, I'm not quite sure why. Um, maybe because of the art style, because it looks a bit 3D-ish compared to most things in AQW, but me myself, I quite like it. I pretty much love this weapon. It looks really nice with the animation and the nice tainted purple on the blade there. The purple smoke and flames coming out of the dragon's mouth. Uh, I'll just go into a close-up view by slash joining white map so you can see the details a lot clearer. And there are some little hidden details on this weapon that are not that easy to actually spot. So let's get started with that. So as you can see, there's the beautiful smoke animation, and then the dragon's head at the top, breathing some of the fire. And there's actually some text on the scythe's hilt, and near where my character's grabbing it. And there's two pieces of, pieces of text, and one of them says Tendo no Mezo, and the other one says Val um, Valoroth. Or Valoroth. Basically, as far as I know, Valoroth actually made this scythe as a little birthday gift for Tendo no Mezo, and it was put in the game as a farmable item. So that's basically why it's in the game, because Valoroth, or Valoroth made it for Tendo no Mezo. So that's pretty neat, and he did an excellent job on it. I really like all the colours and the art style. And at the very end of the scythe, there's a little kind of fiendish demon head which looks really nice with a horn which seems like a little dark unicorn horn and then these blood red arch fiend gems I'd imagine they are on the actual scythe but I really love the animations that they put on this and there's a little chain and some kind of tentacle vine things and a big pointy horn at the end but yeah, I really like the design of it. It's very unique. But anyway, I'm basically just going to show you how to actually get the scythe, the quest, step by step, pretty much stuff like that, and some helpful little tips to make it a lot faster. So first off, what you really want to do, um, you can either look up the quest on the wiki, or actually go to Nelgaf and get the quest as a little checklist to see what to get first. So I'm just going to go to Nelgaf. Because I already have all the resources. Okay, so I'm just at Citadel and we'll go for the caves here. Okay, oh wait, one sec, I need to go back for Kansei. <laughs> okay, so, off to um, Nelgaf we go. So there's only a few items you actually need to get to Nelgaf. I've covered it in many of my videos before. So you just need a Hydra skill from the Hydra and Hydra Lake, which you can easily access by going slash join Mobius, talking to the fairy, and pressing Hydra. There's a button there, and it will take you straight to the Hydra. And then you also need Ocarina's Fang, which is in Fairy Forest, or Fey Forest. I forgot um, which it's called, but that can also be accessed by slash joining Mobius and talking to the Fairy Lady there. And then pressing a button that says the Spider. And it will take you straight to Ocarina, where you can kill that and get the Fang. Then there's also, you need Vaf's hair, which can be found at, um, Stal Staglobite, um, from Vaf, of course. Then also Ascharian's chain from killing Ascharian. And another one, which is Oduguru's tooth, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, okay, so yeah, that's what you need to get here, plus 50 bone dust, and... 
um, 50 Dark Makai to actually get to Nelgath. That's basically all you need to get here. And the quest is on SKU, so it's recently been added, and it just says here, Quest. You press that, and it's called Eternal Rest. So, this video might go for a long time, depends. And yeah, so now you can see what you need. And the farming can take up to one day, up to three days, or longer, depending on how fast you farm and what pets you have to actually farm the stuff with. Because the dark crystal shards take a while. But other than that, the other stuff is not too hard. Depending if you actually have some of the stuff already, because I already had a few of the items already, such as Heart of the Void. But anyway, for the first item, which is Batwing Scythe, what you want to do is dark, um, slash join dark over your grave. Uh, dark over your grave. And once you're here, you just want to go up here, talk to this guy, and it says quest there. And you take the last quest, which is called His Bark is Worse Than His Blight, except that. And then what you want to kill is Blight Fang, I'm pretty sure. Is it? Yeah, Blight Fang. And you just want to kill him, um, turn in the quest, and you have a chance of getting the Batwing Scythe. It's a random chance. But yeah, it only took me about four tries, I'm pretty sure. Four or five tries. So, if you have a bit of luck, it should drop pretty quick from the quest. Or you could have terrible luck and it will take ages. <laughs> but yeah, it won't take that long, because he doesn't have much HP, so he's a very easy kill. And then you just want to turn in the quest. And you have a chance at getting it. So that one's pretty easy. So next up we have um, also the Batwing Scythe as member, so if you're not a member you won't be able to actually equip the Batwing Scythe, but you don't need to anyway. So now Dark Crystal Shards, which is some of the hardest ones to actually get for this, because you need 200. And I'll just show you a couple of ways you can get some. So if you're a non-member and you don't have the Astral Orb or Crimson Orb, which are um, the, some of the best Nelgaf farming pets, you might you can use Nelgaf Larvae, Drudge, Drudgeon, um, pretty much you can use those, or you can also slash join Dreadrock, oh. uh. okay, so slash join Dreadrock, and there's a few quests there that actually give you a chance of getting Three times dark, sh um, dark crystal shards, and enough you can keep keep trying that quest till you get the right amount. But that will take ages. But if you do have the crimson or astral orb, you might as well just do the quest 200 or more times to get what you need. Because I already had some dark crystal shards from ages ago when I farmed, and then I just farmed about 80 more to get 200 by using the astral orb and also by doing the quest in this area a couple times. So yeah, if you're not a member, you can do Nogath Lave or Drudgeon or this area. And the quest is up here, Dreadrock Gem Exchange and you do need a Undensified 13 and your inventory to actually do this, I'm pretty sure. But as you can see here, you have a chance of getting into gem times five, dark crystal shard times three, diamond of Nelgaf times two. There's another way you can get dark shards, but it takes a little bit long, and that's by if you have one of the sort of Nelgaf pets, such as Celestial Sword of Nelgaf, Sword of Nelgaf, Ape um, Betrayal Blade of Nelgaf, Nelgaf, and all these other ones, and you press on them, they come up with quests. And there's one called Essence of the Defeat um, Regent. And basically, you just have to get all the things that you need. 
So yeah, you basically just need the things that you use to get to Nogaf. Plus, um, yeah, 50 Dark Maka kills. And then you also need to kill Timnikius, which is one of the Chaos Lords, once to get Timnikius Chain, which is a Tempori. I mean, yeah, um, a Temp item, so it's not a Perm item. And then you would turn that in, so I'll just show you that quest anyway, since I have one of the Swords of Nogaf that have the quests. And basically, you just turn that in, and you get one Dark Crystal Shard, or you can have a chance of getting two Dark Crystal Shards, but that rarely happens. So, I have Celestial Sword of Nogaf, which is one of the old ones, not really old, just by last year, I'm pretty sure. And as you can see, when I click it, it, up, uh, it will come up with the quest, so... Yeah, Essence of the Defeat Reagan. And yeah, as you can see here, just the stuff you need to get to Nogaf, and you have a chance at getting some Dark Shards. So that's how you get Dark Shards. It's simple, but complicated at the same time. And it can take quite a while. But yeah, so after that, we have Death Scythe of Nogaf. I'm pretty sure I covered everything to do with the Dark Shards. Sorry if I didn't. But I'm pretty sure I did. Anyway, Death Scythe of Nelgath. This one's not too hard to get. Um, basically you just need to find someone that has um, Drudge and the Assistant. And take the quest that says Secret Item. And once you take that quest, you are going to want to slash join um, Willow Creek. And then, yeah. So you want to join Willow Creek. And once you're here, you're just going to go in here. And the quest will require you to try and get um, an item called the Secret One. The Secret One is dropped by a Legion Spy, I'm pretty sure, or Secret Spy. Which spawns randomly in this area where the snails are. And it drops very fast. I'm pretty sure it's a 100% drop. Oh, yeah, Hidden Spy. Okay. Yeah. It only drops if you have the quest called the Secret Item um, actually accepted. So it won't drop right now. And then you also need a Nogaf Ruin, I'm pretty sure. Oh wait, no, you're just going to need uh, another Undentified 13, so just one of those. And then you turn in the quest, and you'll get the Iron Scythe of Nogaf, not the Death Scythe yet, um, Death Scythe yet, because you're still one step away from getting that. After you have the Iron Scythe, all you want to do is um, go back onto one of the Sword of Nogaf's, press on it, the quest come up, and then you want to accept the Empowering Items quest. So this one requires... Um, another Identified 13, just one of those, 10 diamonds, and then Identified Item of Nogaf, which is actually the Iron Scythe of Nogaf that you get from the Secret Item quest. And then Nogaf Ruin 5, which is dropped by the Undead Bruisers, I'm pretty sure. And then you'll get the Death Scythe of Nogaf. Just to see if it is dropped by the Undead Bruisers, I'll go ahead and slash right Underworld. Because as far as I remember, it was. But the Nogaf ruins confuse me a lot, sometimes. But I'm pretty sure they are. I'll just be right back. Okay, so yeah, Nogaf Ruin 5 is actually dropped by the Undead Bruiser. Okay, so I was right about that. Because I'm pr oh, I remember that it was, but I just wasn't quite sure. And then you'd basically be done, and you'd have the Death Scythe of Nogaf then. I'll just go ahead and unaccept that quest. Okay. And next up on the quest is actually going to be 
not the easiest one at all. It's the Ungodly Reavers of Nogaf. If you know what the Ungodly Reavers of Nogaf are, they're a very, very popular Nogaf weapon, which came out years ago. And they're from the Juggernaut of um, Juggernaut Items quest, basically ju Juggernaut of Nogaf quest. And to do that, you have to go to Nogaf again, so I'm just going to go slash join Citadel. And this one can be quite hard. Just gonna invite Kansei. Okay. But yeah, this, um, to get the Ungoli Reavers, it can be quite hard. I was prepared for it though, I actually had all the items to do Juggernaut. So I had a non mem voucher and stuff. But yeah, without the Astro Orb and Crimson Orb, it's a lot harder. But if you do have the Astro and Crimson Orb like I do, it's a lot easier to get Nogaf stuff. It doesn't take as long. But sometimes it can. Okay, so to get to the Juggernaut of Nelgaf Quest, you just want to press Quests, and then here, Contract, and then it says Get Totems, and it'll come up. It's the first one, Juggernaut Items of Nelgaf. And basically, all you need for this quest is 50 Tainted Gems, and Tainted Gems aren't that hard to get. You can get them by collecting Bone Dust, and then going into the Sword of Nelgaf Quests again. And by pressing it, there's something that's called Bone Dust Regent, where you can change 25 Bone Dust into a Tainted Gem. So you just have to keep farming Bone Dust and trading them into Tainted Gems, pretty much. Uh, where's that? Yeah, Bone Dust Regent. Me, myself, I just used the Astro Ore, but I did, in the past, I did use this method. To get bone dust, to get tainted gems. As you can see there, 25 bone dust equals 1 tainted gem. So you can just do that if you don't have the astral orb or crimson orb. And then, some other stuff that you will need for this quest is Dark Crystal Shard. We already covered that though, so that's fine. Diamond of Nogaf. They aren't that hard to get, you only need 13. And you need 50 dark for this, by the way. And then here, you only need 13 diamonds. You get diamonds from pretty much every um, actual farming Nogaf quest, such as Nogaf Larvae. You have a chance of getting them. For Astro and Crimson Orb, it's a 100% chance. So if you did it 100 times, you will have 100 of them. Easiest way to actually get diamonds is by slash joining Evil War Null uh, with an unidentified 13 in your inventory and accept the quest that's called Crush the Weak, or just the first quest, and just keep killing monsters over and over again, um, and just keep getting diamonds from those quests, because with the first one, if you're not a member, I'm pretty sure you get two, if you're a member, you get three. And you just keep doing that, and it builds up slowly, but it's worth it. So that's just an easy way to get diamonds. Um, Voucher of Nogap and Donmem, this one can be a bit of a tricky one, um, from the Astral Orb and Crimson Orb, it's a 1% drop, so it can take a really long time to get. Um, from Drudge, Drudgeon and Craig and Bamboozle, it's not 1%, I'm pretty sure, so it's just a random drop. From Larvae, it's also a random drop, so basically you just have to keep doing those kind of quests. The Nogaf Larvae, Drudgeon, Craig and Bamboozle, Astral Orb, Crimson Orb, just keep doing those till you get one of these. So, those quests for Drudgeon and Craig and Bamboozle is Spin the Wheel of Chance, I'm pretty sure, and the Assistant quest, where you can get Voucher of Nolgaf on those. Totem of Nolgaf, these aren't 
that tricky, but they can be at times. You only need three for this quest. The way you get totems is pretty simple. You just have to kill a bunch of Dark Makai and collect Essence of Nogaf, which I collected over a while. So here I have a hundred. And you can go to Drudgeon, the assistant, and there's a quest there. And if you have a no um, voucher of Nogaf and Don Memo in your inventory, and you um, accept the quest called Voucher Exchange, I'm pretty sure, yeah, Voucher Exchange, you can exchange 60 essences of Nogaf for one totem. Or you can just stack up 100 essences of Nogaf and trade them for one totem here, but I prefer the drudge and the assistant way. Or you can also get totems from Astrolorb, Crimson Orb, Larvae, Drudgeon, and Craig by their quests that they have. I got mine from the Astral and Crimson Orb and some from Drudgeon's um, Voucher Exchange quest. And then we have the Gem of Nogaf. Gems of Nogaf, they are sometimes hard to get. They're just random drops from quests. So from Larvae, Drudgeon, Craig and Bamboozle, Astral Orb, Crimson Orb, they're just random drops. I'm pretty sure there's not a really easy way to get them. They just randomly drop, so you just pretty much have to keep farming till you get 20 of them for this quest. And then Nogaf Ruin 2 is dropped by... Pretty sure it's Dark Makai? I can test that out. We'll just test that out quickly. Okay, so the Nogaf Ruin 2 is also dropped by the Undead Bruiser, by the looks of it. So, Nogaf Ruin 5 is dropped by the Undead Bruiser, and Nogaf Ruin 2 is also dropped by him. Which is... pretty weird. But yeah, once you have the Nogaf Ruin 2, you are then done with Juggernaut items in Nogaf, as you can see there. So I'm just gonna go back to Nogaf really quick. So I'll pause the video so you don't have to sit through that, and I'll abandon the Juggernaut of Nogaf quest, and we will go on to the next item. Okay, so yeah, anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and abandon that Juggernaut of items now, because I showed you how to actually do that. Okay, so next up on the list, after you actually get the Ungodly Reavers, oh yeah, oops, I forgot. So, once you actually finish Juggernaut items of Nogaf, it will let you choose a uh, reward, and you obviously are going to choose the Ungoli Reavers and Nogaf, so you're just going to press on it, and it'll select it for you then, and you'll get, and then you turn in, and you'll get the Ungoli Reavers, which you need for the quest to get the Void Avenger Scythe. Okay, and then after that, you need the Scythe of Sisphian, and there's a couple ways you can actually get this, it's not that hard at all. Um, well, if you're a member, you can slash join fire. And basically, what you need to do to actually get the Scythe of Sisphian is kill fire elementals that are level 25. And if you're not member, um, so if you're a member, you can go to here, fire, because they're everywhere and they're randomly spawned. But if you're not member, there's a couple of other places you can go, such as Gilead, because there are some there, or Earthstorm, and there's a few other places too. So then you just have to keep killing them until it drops. And it's not really hard to get, it drops after a while. And once you have that, you can move on to the next one. So Heart of the Void, um, this is one of the items I already had um, from ages ago. And this one can be a bit tricky to actually get to because of it involves a puzzle. And me, myself, I'm not very good in memory puzzles, so it can take a while. So for this, you just want to slash join Void, which is one of my favorite maps. And once you're here, what you want to do is just go through here. Basically, the Heart of the Void is dropped by the Great Void Dragon, which is in the very middle. Oh, wrong way. 
have to go down this way. And he's basically in the heart of this void map. So that's pretty much why it's called Heart of the Void, because he's in the heart of the void. So you have to do this memory puzzle here. That's not the memory puzzle, that's the quests. And you basically, when you play it, lights pop up, and you have to um, remember the order of the lights, and then you have to click on them. So I'm pretty sure this is like... Yeah, see? So then you get it right, and you... Basically, there's three rounds, it gets harder and harder. Then on the third one, if you get it right, you get to go in, and the Void Dragon is there. So I'm actually going to try and get past this just to show you how uh, much HP the Void Dragon has and stuff like that. So be right back. Well anyway, it's been a good at least 10 to 30 minutes, or 20 to 30 minutes. And it's pretty late and I can't really get past this puzzle because my brain isn't working properly right now. Also, I'm just really bad at these memory-like games. Like, the thing is, I always get up to round 3, and on the last click, where it's... Because on the last one, um, the light, the orbs glow 8 times, and on the 8th click, I mess it up, and that's happened heaps of times, so I can't really get past it right now. But anyway, yeah, basically, when you actually get past it, it teleports you inside this huge globe, and my... Graphics are on low right now because it was lagging a bit, but yeah it teleports you into this huge globe where you fight the void dragon Just keep killing it a couple times till you get the heart of the void which looks like a skeletal love heart with glass in it and That's basically that So after you have the heart of the void you want to get the scythe of eternal rest To get the scythe of eternal rest you want to slash join sepulcher Uh, okay. I probably did a typo. Uh, okay, so it turns out that my internet actually just went really weird and disconnected. So that's why I wasn't joining this area. I spelt it right. But yeah, anyway, so all you have to do is slash join Sepulcher. S U P U L C H U. R E, that's how you spell it. And then you basically just have to keep killing Dark Sepulcher. He's not that hard to kill over and over again until you get the Scythe of Eternal Rest. And it only took me probably about 30 ish kills, but it can take way less or way longer depending on what your luck is or chance. And then after that, there's No Gaps Approval. So you need a thousand of them, which can take quite a while. As you can see here, I have Archfiend's Favor and all that, that are, that's over a thousand, because I also accepted those while farming. Basically, what I did to get those is slash join Evil War Null. Uh, once you're here, what I basically did was accepted the Crush the Weak quest, which I talked about before for farming diamonds so while I killed these guys to get approvals I could also farm diamonds at the same time so that's basically what I did so it's a win-win and you just have to keep killing all these guys over and over again until you get a thousand null gap approvals while you have a chance at farming diamonds with the quests that are here so that's pretty nice there so that's what I did and then once you have a thousand, you can move on to the next item, which is the Dracula Destroyer Scythe. So this one can take quite a while because it has a very low drop chance. But to get this, you have to slash join Dragonheart. And what you're wanting to do is just go all the way to the very end of this map. So as far as you can go. So, past here. And 
right around in here. And then you just have to go all the way through here. And basically you get the um, Dracolith Destroyer Scythe by beating Avatar of the Dracolith, I'm pretty sure. Or the, the Soul Lich. And you just have to keep killing him until he drops it. It is a 1% drop. Um, for me, myself, um, I was farming it with a friend and it only took 4 kills. Because I had a feeling it was going to drop and it did. It only took 4 kills, which is very quick for a 1% drop. And he has just a bit of HP. So yeah, Avatar of the Desolich, just have to keep killing him until you get the scythe. He does have a whole set that goes with the scythe, so if you want the set, you can get that. Um, so next up we have Void Aura. And Void Aura... Well, Void Aura can take a really long time, depending if you're a member or not, or if you have Sepulchre's armor or not. Also, just um, a little note. Um... The other versions of these monsters, these dragons, the ones in Dragon Challenge, such as this one, um, do not drop the items for this quest, only the actual monsters, so not the ones in Dragon Challenge. So only this guy drops the scythe, not the one in Dragon Challenge. Same with the Void Dragon, only the Void Dragon in Slash Join Void drops the heart, not the one in Dragon Challenge. So that's just a little note there. But yeah, anyway, so for Void Aura, you want to slash join Shadowfall. And now once you've actually gone to Shadowfall, you talk to this guy here, and you press quests, and basically if you do have Sepulcher's armor, um, this would go a lot faster, but I don't, so I go for the member quest. So if you were non-member, you'd go for the first quest, which is Retrieve Void Auras. This one takes quite a while. It even tells you here what you need to do. You need to get some um, Astral Empathate Essence from Astral Empathate in Time Space, yep. And then some Essences from Belrot the Fiend and Citadel, Black Knight Essences. Basically 20 of each, so you need... Black Knight Essences, Tiger Leech Essences, Karnax Essences, Chaos Vordred Essences, Teitengu Essences, Undying Avatar Essences, and Void Dragon Essences. But for this one, it's the Void Dragon and Dragon Challenge. So don't worry about that, you don't have to do the memory puzzle in Void for this one. And you need Essences from Creature Creation in Maul. So here it tells you where to actually go anyway, so I don't really have to explain that. And you have a random chance to get 2 times, 5 times, or 10 times Void Aura. So this is, if you're non-member, you can do that quest. If you're member, and you don't have Sepulchre's Armor, you'll go for this quest. This is the one I used. Basically, you just have to collect 175 Mirror Essences from the monsters in Slash Join Red Death. Which is part of the second Chaos Saga, or... Um, what people normally refer to as one of the last ones, which has Exiang in it. And it doesn't take long at all, actually. The monsters have hardly any HP at all, so they mostly get one shot if you have a nuking class that has area skills, such as the new Death Knight Lord or something like that. And yeah, just collect 175 of them. Twisted Essences um, are from... Slash join Netherworld B, which is a Voltaire map, and just have to kill the monsters there to get those. And these are all 100% drops, um, the requirements, so the Mirror Essences, Twisted Essences, Transpose Essence, all 100% drop. But yeah, the Twisted ones can take a while, because the monsters in that area do hit very hard. And then you just need Transposed Essence. So I'm actually just going to show you how to where to actually get those quickly might as well so you want to go slash join red death so this is red death they might look familiar and as you can see here not much HP at all so that's pretty easy 
Twisted Essences, Slash Showing Nether World. D, which is only a member map, that's why this quest is member. And yeah, as I said, these monsters here do hit pretty hard. So it's better to have a friend there, or do single target moves in this area. So you have to kill these guys, and they do do a lot of damage, actually. Yeah. They can cut you down very fast. So that was just a bit of a pain. But it was worth it anyway. And it's only 15 void aura, so that's fine. It doesn't take heaps of time. And then for the transposed essence. Transposed essence is pretty easy. You just need a slash join doom war. And once you're here at Doom War, you want to press um, Keep Battling, that takes you here, then Zombie War, and you go into the Yoga here, and basically what you want to do is kill um, Zombie Ultion, and he will drop the Transposed Essence, Zombie King Ultion right here, not much HP, kill him and he drops the Essence, and then basically just do that um, quest over and over again till you have 15 void auras. I got 19 because I did not get lucky with a couple of turn-ins because um, with the member quest you have you will receive one of the following items see so you will receive either two times five times or ten times I got two times the first time then ten times then I got two again, and then I got five times, so I didn't have the best of luck. But yeah, if you get ten times and then five times, yeah, then you're pretty lucky, because then you only had to do the quest twice. Um, but if you do have Sepulchre's armor, it's a whole lot easier, because basically all you have to do is um, go to Shadow Realm, kill the um, knights and everything in that area 50 times, and then go to Shadow Lord and kill the Shadow Lord three times, and you will receive either three times, five times, or ten times Void Aura. So that's a lot quicker for people who have Sepulchre's armor. So Shadow Realm is, um, you can only go to Shadow Realm if you're level 45 plus. That's something else. So slash join Shadow Realm. I'll just show you quickly. So yeah, this is Shadow Realm, and for Shadow Lord, if you are, um, oh never mind, I was just about to say if you're non-member, that doesn't matter anyway. But yeah, Shadow Lord, you can just slash on Shadow Lord or press this button up here, but I'll just show here, Shadow Lord. And yeah, there you go. Um, so, the quest up here... It looks completely bugged out. Oh, okay, there we go. It fixed itself. Okay, so it was broken just then. Um, so after you have your Void Auras, the last very final item is Letter from Asuka and Tendo. So this one is probably one of the easiest. You just have the Slasher and Citadel. And once you're here, you just want to go all the way through here. And you just want to keep um, killing these burning witches. They only have 1 HP, so you don't even have to use a move. Just auto attack them. And they will randomly drop the letter. So, yeah, that's pretty much how you get the letter. And once it drops, you can go back to Nelgaf, which I'll do right now. So, be right back. And yeah, so once you're done, you come back to Nelgaf, and you can turn in your quest, and you will get the Void Avenger Scythe, plus five Blood Gems of the Archfiend. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, that can take a pretty long time to get. But anyway, other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I really hope it helped. And I'll see you next time. Bye.
Oh. Oh, and also, um, I'm pretty sure the scythe will go rare. Because I have a pretty big feeling that it will, because I don't think this would actually stay in the game for long. Because it just doesn't feel like it would, and it's a birthday item for Tendo. So I feel like it will be a rare thing. So yeah. Try to get it if you want it, and if you actually can get it. So, good luck in farming. And yeah, I'll see you next time. So, see you guys.